Hi. Today I have a special guest. It's Kai Hell. Um, today he will demo or show us an awesome demo. Three words: DBRX, Databricks SQL, and Power BI. Trust me, you're gonna be amazed. Hi, Kai. Hey, Yusuf. Thanks for having me. So please, can you show us this magnificent demo? Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's start here. So the, the way this demo works today is we're doing this on the New York City taxi data set. And we built a prompt um, so that given a given trip inside the tax date history, we can go and actually generate a, um, a story that I've made up. So I made up a, ca a cab driver who will tell you a story about this trip. So in this example, we're looking at a trip that happened in in, um, in Queens in February. You know, it's like some come nice day and on a Monday. And this is what happens. So he produces a nice prompt right here, tells you a really fun story about each one of the trips. Uh, and the way this is set up is as a tooltip report inside Power BI. So if we go behind the scenes really quickly, let me kind of show you what, what what's going on. So first inside uh, Databricks, we have a, a new function uh, that you can run in DB SQL called AI Query. And you can bring your own model if you want, but in this case, we also provide foundational models inside Databricks, and one of them is our DBRX. Uh, and so this is how you can invoke it. You can just say, AI query, this is the, the magic string that makes that, and then you pass it a prompt. In this case, this is the prompt saying, pretend you're a, pretend you're a taxi driver. I'm going to give you some information about a trip. Tell me about a trip that you had there. Uh, and when we run this, we produce a result. So that's pretty straightforward from, from Databricks SQL. Pretty nice to be able to just kind of quickly call out to, to your AI prompts right there. And then what we do inside Power BI uh, behind the scenes is we bring that same query in and we parameterize it, right? So we add some specific details about the trip, like where it was picked up, where it was dropped off, when it happened. Uh, and then from there, we can bind those parameters to our model. And so that's what makes takes the effect. And then we created this, this nice tooltip report behind that then when we come and supply values to it on the, uh, on the report side over here, uh, that's what makes it generate a, a particular um, a prompt value for that particular trip. So that's that's pretty much how it works. Uh, if you, we have a blog out there if you want to see more details on how to actually implement this, uh, but it's really really impressive. I, I think like the thing for me was like how quick this was. I literally just thought of the idea and I said, oh, this will take a little time. I'll need to think a little about it. I kind of started about five, literally about five minutes later. I was like, oh, it worked. And I was like, oh, that's it. Oh, okay, this is great. This is really amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing because it takes an input of like where did you start your your trip where it ends and then it explains all the things you will see on your uh, on your way to to the point b uh, giving some details which means you can use this to improve or let's say give more insights so we took the example of new york taxi cab but it can be any other data sets so just to improve the vis the visualizations for the end users and this is awesome because it doesn't require a lot of tuning just use uh, AI query and you can use DBRX or Llama tree or uh, uh, Mixture or any other uh, foundation model, but also the uh, proprietary models such as, uh, I don't know, OpenAI, Anthropic or so on. Yeah, and uh, I think, yeah, if you're thinking about like, I think the thing for a customer would be, if you're thinking about how we could analyze further, we always talk about in Power BI and reporting tools going from the prescriptive you know, kind of like, like, what is it I should be doing or the diagnostic? Why is this thing happening? This is a really great tool to kind of add that on top of a descriptive report, which just tells you what happened. So this happened, but I want to know more about it. I want to know about it in my context. You can absolutely pass this over to uh, a chat bot that, you, that you've created, provided that input and have it provide, you know, kind of its thoughts on what's going on in the market, what's going on with your customers, the customer history, uh, I'll have all that available and do some of that addition analysis. So really powerful way to extend, uh, I think, what you already do today in your Power BI tools with analysis. Yeah. And if you just can explain to our folks, like in high level, uh, the requirements. So we already discussed about um, uh, the uh, AI query, and then you need to go to Power BI, and then you need to add some parameters. So can you go just high level, uh, the steps, of course, all the, the, the detailed steps will be in the article that has been written by Kai. Yeah, you really don't. I mean, the requirements are pretty straightforward. If you're willing to use a foundational model, especially like again, Mistral or our, our, our DBRX or one of the ones we already provide, I and mean, then it really is like, you just need to have the permissions to use that model inside your environment. So we provide those in every workspace, every uh, 
workspace that's out there. So it's just a matter of, do you have this capability to use it? You you are built for that. So, you know, it's a, always a, a thing you're turning on and, and evaluating. But uh, once you have that right there, you do, you know, using Databricks SQL is, uh, again, just a, a standard offering that we have. Uh, and then really once you once you've built that, the, I think the hardest part really, I mean, in this one, obviously a toy example, but I think the the the, the real requirement is to have a use case that really aligns well to um, non quantitative thinking. Like, so you need to explain a why, right? That's very hard to do with, with just pure numbers and data. So once I think you have that and you kind of have the understanding of the relationship between how your users, um, the other piece of this is, as you can imagine, is the, the main requirement is that that you really do want it to focus on one single row or detailed set of data. So you want to have an analysis that drives where the final product is, like in this case, a single trip, um, or you know, in your use case, a single customer or a single transaction um, or a single order. Uh, and so that way you can like really kind of you know m minimize the amount of noise that's going to come from this system. Because if you hand it a whole set of data and you say analyze this. It'll just kind of point out like really obvious things when you like say, hey, hey what's going on with this particular customer order can be very precise. Um, but otherwise, the requirements are that's it. Um, any Power BI tool can use this. You can use this. I'm doing this here in the desktop. So, you know, it's not like you even need the service or any of those capabilities. Um, but this will also work out in the Power BI service just fine uh, because at the end of the day, it's just another SQL query, which is really the best part. I, I really think that's the most like if you think about like we already do SQL queries to so do an lot of analysis inside Power BI. This is really just another query. And that that by itself just means um, you don't need anything new on top of Power BI. You don't need any new capabilities. You're using the same warehouse you're doing to, to do the visual analysis inside Power BI. Yeah, that's amazing. Make sure to all have a look at the article. It's going to be in the description of the recording. And make sure to leave some comments for, for Kyle. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you, Yusuf.